There are many types of crystal radios and I've built a few of them. And based on the models I have built, I thought I would go through and rate them on like how easy are they to build and you know, maybe just which one should I build first. So here are some photographs of a few of them that I've built recently. The criteria I'm gonna to use to judge this uh, are things like skill to build. So this is rated one to 10 where the skill level is uh, number of skills and difficulty. Uh, then the cost of components where one is the lowest. So is this stuff you find around your house or is it stuff you have to go out and order online? Construction complexity, uh, one to 10 where one is the lowest and this includes the number of parts. Uh, is it simple woodworking or is it something that's going to require, you know, a router or specialized tools, wiring, soldering, and so on. And then quality of listening. And this is more subjective. I'll try to keep it as objective as possible, but yeah, there's some subjectivity to this. So for example, operation skill, we'll rate that low, medium, or high. Uh, the selectivity of the radio, so how well it focuses on a single station. And again, low, medium, high. Sensitivity is loudness, and again, low, medium, high. And clarity, so is it fuzzy or is it sharp? And again, low, medium, and high. So we'll start out with the diode radio, which is this thing, which is just a simple diode and you put it together with clips. You can also wire it together with solder. Uh, build skills, uh, two, we'll rate this as a two out of 10. It's the easiest, it's a diode, an earphone, an antenna, and a ground, and you can't get much simpler than that. You can clip it together, you can solder it together, uh, wire twist it, whatever you need. The cost is a one. It is the lowest cost you're gonna find and the construction complexity is the simplest. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna do any better than that. Uh, it has two parts plus the antenna and ground, so yeah. And quality of listening, well, the operation skill is the lowest because there's nothing to do other than wire it together and listen to it. The cons, well, the selectivity is low. You're gonna get the loudest station in your area and there's no way to to like tune to a different station. And in fact, if you get two overlapping stations like I do here sometimes based on my antennas, um, yeah, it kind of out of luck. Um, you have to just change antennas if you want to retune the station. QL, QOL sensitivity, it's low to medium. It's got a limited range. And the clarity is low to high. It depends on the distance, competing stations and so on. I've actually gotten uh, really good uh, listening from it uh, when one of the stations is on or been powered down more. Okay, the wiper radio. So this is one of the most basic tunable radios there is. And the build skills, well, it's again, easiest tunable. Um, if it's wood, it's a four. So you need to cut, drill, chisel, whatever. Uh, there's some wiper bending that's, you know, a little bit tricky. And if you're gonna 3D print it, and I've got some of those online, it's just a, a three, not very hard. Cost is a two, and it's the lowest for a tunable type of radio. And that's because most of the parts are just scraps. You can get wood, plastic, whatever from around the house. Most of these things I just salvaged out of my storage room. The construction complexity, if it's wood, it's relatively straightforward. If it's 3D printed, it's a three. So it goes from four if it's wood, three if it's 3D printed. That's because you don't have to produce a lot of these parts. The 3D printer does it for you. The wiper construction, yeah, it definitely adds complexity because bending the loop that goes down here is a little bit more difficult. Putting the ball in there, yeah, okay. It requires a little drilling and gluing and whatever. The QOL, the operation skill is low. You just move the wiper back and forth as needed. The selectivity is low to medium. So it's certainly better than the single diode radio. Uh, it depends on your area. This type of radio can be overwhelmed by one loud station in the area, but generally speaking, it's, it's good. The sensitivity is high uh, because the antenna directly connects to the coil here. And selectivity. The uh, tuning, well, it takes a little bit of practice. You have to be able to get the uh, wiper arm on top of one of these uh, windings. If it falls between them, you can lose signal and what have you. Uh, again, it can be overwhelmed by loud stations and it's high sensitivity leads to low selectivity. And that's a common problem. That's a trade-off with almost all radios, selectivity and sensitivity. 
The dual wiper radio, the pros, the build skills in wood, it's a four. It's pretty much the same as a single wiper, but you'll have to be more careful with the measurements of where you place the tower. They have to be in front of the section of the coil that they are meant for. So this one has to be in the middle of that section and this one has to be in the middle of that one. And you don't want these, uh, these arms colliding. The cost is higher. Yes, it's slightly higher because it needs two sets of wipers. The construction complexity, if it's wood, it's a four. Uh, the second wiper adds components. So yeah, you pretty much double the wiper components needed. It's a two part coil, so it's a little more difficult to wind, but not terribly. So it can be built without soldering, but soldering is preferred. The operation skill is a little bit trickier than single wiper because you, you're tuning the antenna and you're tuning the station like that. Um, selectivity is medium. And yes, it's better than a single wiper because you can also tune the antenna and it's less inclined to be overwhelmed by your loud stations in your area. So like the one I have that's about a kilometer from our house. The sensitivity is high. That's, yeah, that's a positive factor. The operation skill, again, is low to medium. It takes a little bit more practice to do both of these wipers because you're tuning the antenna and you're tuning the radio. And if you get them a little off, uh, yeah, you can may say, oh, it quit working. Yeah, that's because you have to have both of these arms on top of one of the windings at the same time. If you, one is off and one is on, you won't hear anything. Single capacitor radio, the pros, the build skills. If it's wood, it's a four because you need to make the cap and coil mounts. So this is the capacitor mount right here. And it can be just a folded piece of metal or it can be the 3D printed mounts that I left online. And there's the coil mounts. You can see it peeking in and out of right there. Um, if it's 3D printed, it's only a three because you know these things, you don't have to make those. The complex coil, yeah, you need to put taps in here. There's two taps on this one. There's one here and then there's one hidden behind this mount. The construction complexity is three. Uh, there are mounts, but on this one, unlike the uh, wiper types, there's no wipers, there's no towers, there's no tensioning. Soldering is less optional. It's probably going to be required, especially around this capacitor. And again, the multi-part coil is, uh, makes it a little bit more complex. The operation skill is low. You pretty much just turn the knob, I mean, back and forth. The selectivity is medium to high, and it is better than a single wiper uh, as far as selectivity goes. And it is less inclined to be overwhelmed by loud stations. The sensitivity is medium. It's not as good as a wiper radio, but it's, yeah, it's, it's up there. Cons, the cost is a five. The capacitor alone can cost as much as uh, multiple wiper radios. So yeah, single capacitor ferrite rod. So I built two of these, two different designs. And the build skills are a five. Uh, the multi-part coil with taps, yeah, those are, those are difficult. Uh, the construction complexity is a four. So you have the cap mount, which is here and the rod mounts, which are here and here. They can be either wood or 3D printed as I've done. Soldering again is you know, pretty much required on this one. You could get away twisting wires, but mm, probably not. The selectivity is a medium. It's slightly better than a single wiper style and less inclined to be overwhelmed by loud stations. And that's because the sensitivity is very low. Yeah, that's I out of uh, five stations in my area, one which is obnoxiously loud, three of them were audible. Uh, the loud one was not very loud and the other two were just a whisper. So uh, yeah, the cost is a six. Uh, a capacitor can cost as much as multiple wiper radios. So again, that's true. And the purchase parts are the rod, the capacitor, the diode and the earphone. So yeah, these two parts here definitely add cost. The dual capacitor radio. Now I have made this one and it is, it's actually very nice. Um, the build skills are a six. Yes, it was pretty hard to get all the components inside this uh, plastic pipe. The multi-part coil also adds some complexity. So the brown stuff right there, that's the coil. And the dual cap mounting and wiring, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, that's a little trickier. 
So construction complexity is a five. Yes, there are no wipers, towers, or tensioning. And again, soldering is becoming a lot less optional. So operation skill is relatively low. You have uh, like the dual wiper, you have the antenna tuner, and then you have the uh, radio tuner itself. The QOL selectivity, medium to high. Uh, yeah, it's better than a single wiper style, but also less inclined to be overwhelmed by loud stations. So yeah, uh, QOL sensitivity is only medium. And that's one of the reasons, again, that's the trade-off between selectivity and sensitivity. If the sensitivity goes down, the selectivity is usually higher. The cost is a seven because one capacitor can cost as much as multiple wiper radios and you got two capacitors inside there. So let's talk about some add-ons you can put on your radio and which ones are interesting and less interesting. So the first one is a cat whisker detector and it is the wood, brass, and stainless type, which is right up here. Build skills are a four. The cost is a two to three, and that varies on how much you have in your storage room already and how much you need to buy. Probably have to buy that stainless ball, but okay. Construction complexity is a four. Yeah, you have to have some woodworking skills and things like that. There's about 10 components. It doesn't look like it, but yeah, there's 10 parts to, to make this thing. And the operation skill is a medium. It, uh, and it is a lot of fun to, to learn to use, uh, poking around on a mineral to see where you can get the best, the best uh, sound. 3D printed cat whisker detector. So it's the same thing as this, only it's in the 3D version. Build skills a three because you, know, you just print it out. Uh, you have to do a little bit of you know, putting in screws and cutting brass and what have you. The cost is a two to three. And again, it varies with how much has been bought versus recycled. The construction complexity is a three because again, there's about 10 components. And the operation skill is a medium. Some more add-ons. The antenna single capacitor. So that's for tuning your antenna. Build skills are a two because it's just a, a quick connect on to your radio like that. Cost is a five because those capacitors are expensive. Construction complexity is a two because you got two wires. You're just uh, injecting this. In this case, I have it shown between the uh, ground, the ground, physical ground and the radio ground. So you're just putting it in there. And the operation skill is medium because yeah, you got two things now to tune. You got this, the wiper, and you got your uh, capacitor. So the dual capacitor upgrade, that's this one down here like that. Build skills is a four, cost is a six because they're a lot more expensive. Construction complexity is a three because you're just inserting it in two places this time uh, rather than one. And the operation skill is a medium. So this is a summary of what we've just gone over. Uh, just kind of a convenient thing so you can come back here and take a look at it for yourself. These are my thoughts on crystal radios. If I were going to start all over again, and wanted a roadmap for how to do crystal radios. This is what I would do. My first crystal radio project would be the diode radio, just putting it together, two components, a couple bucks and some old wire as an antenna. And you get the thrill of, of hearing a radio station. Uh, yeah, with just like magic, no batteries, nothing like that. The best simplest radio, so maybe my next project would be the single wiper radio, this one. Yeah, a little bit more complex, um, a little bit more work in it. The best second radio would be the best overall performer, which is the dual wiper. This thing is incredible. Yeah, this is my choice for, if, if I was just gonna build one radio, this would be the radio I would build because it's really, loud and it really has good selectivity for what it is. The best advanced radio is a tie. So it's either going to be the single capacitor or it's going to be the dual capacitor. Obviously the dual capacitor costs significantly more, but yes, these are both very good. The best upgrade would be the single capacitor antenna tuner. So if I got my wiper radio or what have you, adding this air variable capacitor to either the antenna or the ground is really a good yeah, it's really a good thing. It's good bang for the buck. And finally, the most fun add-on is cat whisker detector because it really takes you back to the old days of, you know, crystal radio where you're literally getting a radio signal because of a rock. 
Okay, well that was it. I hope you found that useful and interesting in your crystal radio experimentation.